this video, this is a carry on from the last one. Um, last time we created a happy face. We made our bones and our face go happy. Now, as you can see, in this video, I've been messing around. Um, I've basically started skinning his face. And, oh, oh, hello. That's not right. Oh. What a bizarre glitch. Let's just see if it does that again. No. Thank God. I thought there was something terrible wrong with him then. <laughs> okay, so if that ever happens to you, do not panic. Um, just simply move it and uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that's happened. But as you can see, move up happy. And I've skinned it in such a way that it started following the bones. Um, and this is kind of a good way of doing it because obviously if you've got it in a position that's not the default position, you know, you can see the deformation better and work it out, which is partially what I'm going to show you in this. I, I'm, I'm, obviously I've created the, the mouth and everything, um, which is tricky enough as it is, um, but obviously it's a, it's a long process and what I'm about to show you here is the exact same. In fact, you're, you're all not stupid. I'm sure you can figure out how to do this anyway. But um, I figured I'd demonstrate it nonetheless. So um, as you can also see, I've removed the glasses because obviously they get in the way of the face. I've actually detached that and it's a little technique for removing... Um, you know, changing the mesh because technically you talk to anyone um, any animator, any rigger, and they will tell you that once the model's done, right, um, yeah, once skinning has been applied to it, then you cannot adjust the model. You can't. Um, you're not supposed to, but I have a little trick which I'll share with you for, for doing that. Um, however, I want you to properly get into the habit of not and making sure that your model is fixed. It's not all the way, obviously. Um, you know, like with the glasses here, sometimes you do have to do this, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm waffling on. So, the idea is, obviously I've got the eyes closed there, as you can see. So, I want to repeat that on this side. And you'll what you what you'll get the point now is if I go into edit envelopes and select the upper eyelid right if I then just select the eyelid parts so right here for the upper eyelid okay so that should do for now we'll do the little ones in a minute and just apply that to one so that drags it right the way down to where it would sit for our upper bone at that angle. Um, it's a bit excessive, so let's knock it back a little bit. Okay, so about five. Now, I can use as well, if you've already done it, you can use your reference from over here. But seeing as I'm doing this from scratch, to demonstrate, I won't cheat in this case. So I'm going to put it a little bit further down, maybe 0 0.75, 0 0.5. Yeah, that'll do. And make this one here, 0.25, a little bit more. There we go. And then to, you need to obviously smooth it out. So select either of them and just uh, knock it up. There we go. Now what's important here is knowing exactly how an eye looks when it is closed. So right here, eyes closed, you can get a good idea of it. And what you might notice is that the upper eyelid drops far more than the lower eyelid comes up. So that's kind of an important tip. With little Zeke here, I have over-exaggerated the lower eyelid slightly just to give more of an impression. But still, the upper eyelid does most of the work. So that's the important thing. Okay, so there we go so far. So what we'll also do, select element, while well, I've got the chance, I'm going to apply this to the eye bone, which is sitting right there. That's the eye bone. Give that a one, just so we knew. Right, 
Now we're going to use this one up here, turn off that, to start creating the second layer of skin that falls down. So I've got to select the upper eyelid again and 0.5, ooh, very excessive. Let's bring it to there for now and then start knocking it down afterwards. And this one, I want to bring kind of most of the way down to near the bottom of the eye. Not all the way, just most of the way. Because this will be where the eye starts to fold in. Okay, so it's kind of near. I need some manual tweaking. Um, so that's six, 0 0.6 at the moment. So let's try manually putting it in 0 0.65. Set weight. Too much. 0.62, bit better. Too little, so it's constantly, constantly trying to get it right. Six, that's the one. Huh, <laughs> way too much. Uh, uh. Still way too much. This is the problem with skinning. It does take time. But hopefully. Okay, we want to leave that free. We'll use the lower lid to push that up shortly. But let's not worry about that for now. Okay, so the last bit we've got to do is this one here. And this one is going to come to around about here just to curve around the eye. Okay, that actually worked out better than I thought it would. So uh, I think I can leave that, surprisingly. I want to pull down this one too. And also there's something inside here, there it is. That sneaky little one in there also needs to come down, but not by that much. Okay, so now that's the top done, you can look at the bottom eyelid. And start once again, same principles, moving it like that. I won't select that one just yet. Select the bottom eyelid. So that one's kind of reach where I want it to get to. So is that one. I do select that one. That one. And that one's at full, so that's about as far as that one's going to get. Okay. Let's have a look. Alright, so let's drop these down a tiny bit. So a little bit too much. I've got a bit mad there. Okay, so bring in the weight tool. Okay. Okay, so I've probably gone a little bit overboard. But we'll get a better idea when we do the other bit. Let's bring that up. So, as you can see, the upper eyelid might actually have to come up a fair bit. Uh, sorry, come down a little bit more. 
But uh, not a problem, of course. So let's bring that in as well. And turn that off. Turn that off. Okay. Kind of looking nearly there. Do select them, do select them. Do select that. Try and get a nice curve to it. Do select that. Select that. Put that one up a bit more. Go in here. Let's bump that up. And also, let's put this one up a few. Okay. Now we can shape it a little bit more. Okay. So it does probably need to drop a fair bit in comparison to that side. I think I got it quite right there. Drop that down a few. And there we go, that's more like it. I did the same with this bit. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah. So that's nearly there. Yeah, in fact this side's turning out a lot neater than that side. So I might re-go over that side. So, okay. With the upper lid again. Got to go back. I'm afraid this is the way these things do happen, and I've got to go and adjust this thing just that bit more. So that one needs to drop a bit lower still. Okay, I'm far more happy with this now. There we go. That's not looking too bad. Okay. I do actually prefer this side. I prefer the job I've done over here. Um, but no matter. That works out just fine. Okay. So, if I just quickly if it'll let me I've got ah uh, not this trick again hmm okay, now it's working, okay, and there we go. 
So at the moment, the one thing you'll notice, and this is where it kind of becomes important to blend the face, over here, if you focus on that, it's incredibly stiff. But if you look over here, there's some movement. Not much, it's subtle, but there is some movement. So we have to bear that in mind. So if we add some influence, especially down places like this, Just a little tiny bit, just to give some movement to it. So over here, I put only a tiny bit. I actually think I should put a little bit more. That's not so much for that one though. Upper, make it point 0.1. Yeah, I think I might have gone a bit mad on that one. But that one should have the upper eyelid. Do, do, do. Okay, a little bit for that as well. There we go. Let's have a look and see. So a little bit more movement, that's better. Okay, so I know the eyes are working and that, um, and the mouth is too. And there's still some little areas on the mouth that I'm not totally happy with. Uh, you know, areas where movement I still feel is quite restricted. But as you can see, I literally did blend it to areas near. The mouth. And I did exactly what I did with this. I basically, for instance, as an example, you can see that these are all set to 1. That's because they didn't need to be anything else. All of this, let's say here, all of this in its area would have started off as 1 assigned to this. And then what I'd have done is I blended it out between, in this case, or in this case, that one I've selected badly there is one but as you can see I've mixed it between the jaw and the head in order to achieve that so blending between different ones you know think about what's affecting where so oh that's interesting these have they have one on that side and they should definitely have one on this side yeah there we go. So think about you know where it's where it's needed. If the jaw affects the dropping of a jaw will affect the skin up here, is it gonna pull on it? So we're down here you can see I adjusted the weights down here so the jaw could drop and it wouldn't sort of fold over it. Obviously in some cases there is gonna be folding over, but just uh, you can see that it works a lot lot better. And that actually is not too nice. Right there. That's currently got the head, jaw and cheek. I don't think it's got enough jaw on it. It's probably the same on the other side as well. I imagine. So I'll do them both at the same time. There we go. That easy. See, it's not a difficult process, it just takes a lot of time. There we go, much better. And, uh, you know, you will constantly spot things like I am. I'm still spotting little bits where you see, like, it looks very sort of rigid there. So, little bits where you can tweak it. And, let's see. I think I'll give that more to the jaw. I was saying that. I 
Maybe I'll take less away from it. It's a balancing act, as you can see. It is it's purely a balancing act. It's trying to get the best out of it. And it's it's difficult sometimes to get the to get the balance right. It's cheek. No. And sometimes obviously it doesn't benefit you too much to mess with it. So I think because it's a low poly model, I don't think I'm going to get much better than that. There's somewhere there actually does bother me. If you watch here, and this is what you need to do, you need to constantly be doing this. That's really rigid. So I know that down here, these need to be done. And I think I can assign some for that because it hasn't actually had any assigned to it. Let's give it a 0.75. And on this side, 0.75. So this middle one, I'm going to blend. I'm going to give 0.25 to that side. And I'm also going to give 0.25 to this side. But notice that one drops. So it's kind of it's kind of a no win really here you have to get it as best as possible it's never going to be perfect let's see 0.25 yeah that's near enough that's kind of near enough There we go. Just that little bit of movement just makes the difference. Okay, so that's essentially it. It's, it was never going to be uh, a big complex video. It, all of this is basically sort of what you've done before. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate it using, obviously, you know, or tr trying to bring it all together for this video. Um, and remember, if that thing happens before where it glitches, um, also, if you can't select this for whatever reason, um, just select over it like that, and then you'll be able to select it afterwards. But if it does glitch, just move it, and it should snap back into place, no problem. Now, I will do a very, 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 very short video um, in the next one, just on as my sneaky trick to adjusting the skin, af well adjusting your model after you've skinned it, but it only works for subtle changes, it doesn't work for you know, big major changes, like you couldn't replace a whole model and it would then, you know, be okay, you know, this is something that's got to be subtle, a tiny little change, like for instance, and what I'll probably demonstrate it with, this one here, which I'm not sure why that's there, um, but I'll use that probably to demonstrate. Okay, so um, that's it.